Hi folks, Dave here. Have you ever wondered how long of an extension cord, cable, or wire could be used for transmitting solar or electrical power? Or perhaps how long of an extension cord would be safe to power a refrigerator or a similar appliance? This video will give you some good insight into the topic. The knowledge applies to all cables, whether they are MC4 cables for a solar panel array, Christmas lights, an AC extension cord, it all works the same way. First, it's important to understand that all cables and all conductors have resistance in them, so they will absolutely lose some of the power they transfer. Resistance means the conductors in the cord slightly impede the current flow, causing some heat to be generated in the process. The longer that cable or cord is, the more power could potentially be lost. Thicker conductors have less resistance and are more efficient, but also have a higher cost. The thickness of wires in a cable or cord is measured by wire gauge. American wire gauge, or AWG, is pretty common. With AWG, the smaller the number, the thicker the conductors. For example, a 14 gauge cord is thicker than a 16 gauge. That's assuming the seller isn't undersizing the wire and claiming it's thicker than it really is, which unfortunately is quite common. Have you ever wondered how much power a specific cable or cord could lose? Here is a quick, practical, hands-on demonstration of how to check that. Let's start with a 200-foot supposed 12-gauge budget-friendly extension cord. Yes, this cord is really, really long. 100-foot extension cords are common, but 200-foot cords are not. To power my test, I have this 1200-watt inverter, amp NVT. I've got my AC watt meter plugged in, and it's reading 120.6 volts. And this is connected to a very short cable. You can't really see it, but it goes up and it plugs into the inverter. And then right here I have a heater. And so I can turn that heater on and test uh, the voltage and current and wattage right off the inverter. Let's go ahead and do that. At the other end of the extension cord, I plugged in an identical watt meter so I can measure the performance at both ends of the cord. Then I plugged my electric heater directly into the watt meter at the long end of the cord. Over here we have 120.3 volts. Let's switch the heater on to the low setting. And we have 120.8 volts on the output. But on the heater side we have 117 volts. So we've lost 3 volts. Now let's switch the heater on to the high setting. And we have 120.7 volts on the supply end. We only have 113 volts on this end, so that's a 7 volt drop. Let's see how many watts are being provided at the supply end. 802 watts. At the other end of the cord, let's see how many watts are being provided. 748 watts. So running a simple 800 watt electric space heater, we put in 800 watts into the supply end of the cord, but only 748 watts came out the other end. This brings in a couple of very important points. The first is that if I'm going to use this 200 foot long extension cord to push 800 watts over a distance of 200 feet, I'm going to end up wasting over 50 watts of power. And that power will just appear as heat along the length of the entire cord. But the second is that there's a significant voltage drop, about seven volts. Now this may not seem too bad losing 50 watts in the cord, although that's very wasteful. The heater still turned on and it still ran. And that's true, if it's just a heater, if it's just a simple appliance, a light bulb, or something like that, it doesn't matter. A heater is a very simple appliance. It just wants electrical power, and it turns on. However, that's completely different when you start talking about a refrigerator. Refrigerators, freezers, uh, air conditioners, things like that, anything that's an inductive load, it's a totally different story. You do not want to plug any kind of valuable appliance that's an inductive load into a long cord like this without verifying that it's able to start properly. Because if a cord like this can't deliver enough voltage to the appliance, the inductive appliance, let's say here we're getting 117 volts, but that's under only a static resistive load. An inductive load doesn't act that way. It acts like a short circuit. And so there's a risk with a long cord like this. If you don't get enough voltage to get that motor turning, you're going to end up with essentially a short circuit and that motor will be burned out. It could also pop the breaker or blow a fuse. This was advertised as a 12 gauge cord. And yet, when I took it out of the box, unsurprisingly, it said it can handle 8 amps. Since this cord is rated at 8 amps, let's see how many amps I was pulling at 800 watts. Okay, we're pulling 6.6 .6 amps at the inverter itself. 6.6 .6 amps at the cord itself on the other end. So this extension cord 
claims to be rated at 8 amps. However, at 6.6 .6 amps, it's losing over 50 watts of power in that cord. Sometimes you can do a little detective work, and the first thing I'm going to look at is right there. If you look closely, there's some numbers printed on the cord. It says 12 AWG and 3.3 mm2, or millimeter squared, 50 degrees Celsius, and SJTW. I would advise you to check these numbers on a wire gauge table and cross-reference them to make sure that you're actually getting a cord that isn't undersized. For example, a seller might cheap out and make their 12 gauge cord sort of like a 13 gauge cord to save costs in copper. This is a 200 foot 10 gauge cord and it's much much thicker. It's sitting on the floor in this box because it's extremely heavy. It's almost 50 pounds. So now we're going to run the same exact test, same exact heater. 120.9 on the output, 120.4 on the other end of the cord. And of course there's a little bit of disagreement between these meters because they're not perfectly calibrated. So really just allow about a half a volt. All right, let's turn the heater on low first. 120.9 on the output. That's much more like it. 119 volts. So we're not losing very much at all. Let's turn the heater up on high and see what happens. 120.8 volts on the output on the inverter end and 117.3 on the other end of the cord. Actually that's not bad at all. What am I getting at here? This yellow cord would be perfect for running a refrigerator 200 foot away from the inverter without any problem at all. With 3 volts of drop at 600 watts I know this cord can run my fridge. If you're losing 7 volts in the cord that's too much. But if you're losing 3 volts, that's perfectly acceptable over 200 feet. No problem at all. I could run an air conditioner, I could run a refrigerator, a freezer, and I wouldn't have any problem with it at all. Let's see how many watts we're getting on the output. 837 watts. So in effect, my heater is drawing a lot more power because of the higher quality cord. Let's see what we have on the other end. 809 watts. So we're getting more power into the heater through this cord. And we're wasting less of that power in the cord itself versus the heater. The 10 gauge cord stacks up pretty well against the 12 gauge cord. It's a significant difference, but it also costs a lot more money. However, based on what I need to do, which is to run inductive appliances such as a fridge 200 feet away, I don't mind the extra cost. And it doesn't matter what you're doing with a cable, it's going to work the same way whether it's DC solar power, running a heater, or charging a battery. Same principles, same logic. Now if you don't have a pair of these watt meters, don't fret, you can still do this test. If you only have one meter, you can measure one end of the cord at a time and write it down and then repeat the test with the watt meter plugged in the other end of the cord. It's the same test. You can use any simple ohm meter to take this measurement of a core. Just make sure and zero it out so that you are accounting for the test leads on the multimeter itself. Here I'm using the Gochifix 3-in-1 multimeter. This was provided by Banggood. If you like the meter and want to try it, there's a link in the description. But please note that I don't get paid any sales commissions if you click on that link. So first step is to stick a multimeter probe in one end of the extension cord. And you can only measure one side at a time. So I'm going to measure this side. And we're getting 0.6. So 0.6 ohms, but there's actually two conductors and we have to measure both because they're both in the circuit. So let's go ahead and measure the other side. Okay, we're looking at 0.6 ohms for both the live and the neutral. We have to add those together. So this cord has about 1.2 ohms of resistance. 1.2 ohms is too high of a resistance for a cord to transmit any kind of real power in this case. Using 110 volts AC, it's just too much resistance. You can get away with a couple hundred watts, but trying to run powerful appliances over a 1.2 ohm cord is just wasting power. Now let's measure the heavier cord and see what we get with that. Okay, we're getting about 0.4 ohms. And let's measure the other side just to be sure. So we're getting about 0.4 ohms uh, per side. The bottom line is that copper costs money. So a thicker cord costs a lot more money than a thinner cord. So in order to run power over 200 feet, any kind of significant power over about 600 watts, I really need to pay for a better cord. Otherwise, I'm risking damaging the appliance. I'm also wasting quite a bit of power in the cord itself, which just doesn't make sense. A 1.2 ohm cord is going to drop quite a lot of voltage over 200 feet. There's just no way around it. 
Basically, my personal rule of thumb is I don't want to see more than one half of an ohm in any extension cord that I use to run a valuable appliance such as a freezer or refrigerator or an air conditioner. If it's something like a heater or just some light bulbs, then I'm not too worried about it. But for an inductive load, I don't want to see more than half an ohm, period. Folks, I hope you enjoyed this video and that it helps you out. If you don't mind, please thumbs up and like the video and also leave a comment. That helps my work gain more exposure on this platform. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you next time.